Hi guys, welcome to Gnome. I have a very interesting theory to present to you on the secret origins of the Xenomorph. And by origins, I mean real life origins, not in canon, but more actually how this idea came into being. I'm a huge fan of Alien and I had no idea about this. It was something I stumbled across while putting my recent Alien Explained video together. And while I briefly touch on it in the visuals there, I doubt many people have actually seen that. So I think it's very much deserving of its own video. Now we know that the Alien was designed by H.R. Geiger originally, and then he went back and forth with Ridley Scott about certain elements of the design, like insisting on black skin instead of the original beige and so on. We know that it's tremendously sexual in its design, just phallic representation on top of phallic representation, and there's a great many other things going on. I'd encourage you to go watch my Alien Explained video if this sounds interesting to you because I go ridiculously in depth on all of the influences in the design. Except for the one that I'm about to share with you here, which was honestly news to me. One thing I should mention about these influences is that there's a lot pointing towards the Xenomorph being a representation of blackness. Some critics have read this as racist. I certainly don't think it is, and I think this video is probably going to present the best reason or theory, let's say, as to why it's definitely not. To cut to the chase, while I was doing research for my video, I stumbled on an extremely underappreciated post on the Alien Covenant forums from 2018 by a user named Nathan Adler. While I am going to expand upon his suggestions here, I have to give him credit because by all accounts, no one else seems to have made this link, and without him, I most certainly wouldn't have either. Adler posted asking if fans were familiar with the Nigerian, more specifically Yoruban, deity of Eshu, and he posts some pictures of Eshu, which I think you'll find very interesting. Now, there's pretty much no denying that this is visually reminiscent of the Xenomorph. It's such a unique shape and figure that as soon as you see it, you can't help but recognize it as such. So Yoruban, or Yoruba, refers to a West African subculture or ethnic group that make up one of the main ethnic partitions in Nigeria and a few of the surrounding countries. Eshu is one of their deities that governs manifestations of the malevolent. In a very loose sense, you could describe him as their Loki. He's definitely a sort of trickster god, but with a definite focus on cruelty and actually more of a go-between between the gods and man rather than a god himself. Other depictions of Eshu also focus on overt phallic representations, just like we see with the Xenomorph. In fact, phallic representation is a huge part of Eshu. In one of many tales about Eshu, he does not want to acknowledge that he had slept with Gababu and her daughter Minona and the creator orders that his penis shall always be erected and that he may never be appeased, which sounds a hell of a lot like the Xenomorph. In another story, he makes his penis into a bridge for people to walk across and that bridge breaks in two. He's also described as making us recognize the fundamental relation between sex and the evolving, continually reconnecting cosmos. An alien in itself is a discussion between the relationship of sex and our adventure into space and has been taken sexually advantage of at the hands of a stronger, dominant alien being. Alien superfans can probably see where this is going because the actor cast for the role of the Xenomorph was 6'10 Balaji Badejo. Badejo was Nigerian. Not just that, but he was in fact Yoruban. As the story goes, the casting agent for Alien met Badejo in a pub in Soho and then introduced him to Ridley Scott, who immediately knew he'd found the perfect actor to play the alien. Now this is Presumably, and predominantly in reference to his height and overall build, but this Yoruban ethnicity may very well have been an influencing factor too. I think at the very least, it's highly coincidental that we have a Yoruban deity being so visually reminiscent of a monster that a Yoruban actor with zero previous acting experience has been chosen to play. It could all very well just be coincidence, but it would be a pretty wild one. There is further relevance, perhaps, in Geiger's Swiss nationality. Like many European countries, the Swiss played a big role in the exploitation of Africa, and British and many other countries, but for this video and Geiger and Scott, Swiss and British is really all that's relevant. One of those countries most affected by Swiss exploitation was Nigeria. And while exploitation comes in many forms, the main one we see in Africa post-slave trade is mining of the natural resources. And what is the Nostromo doing out in space? Mining something that doesn't belong to them, exploiting natural resources for their own industrial efforts, just like white Europeans did in Africa. Something that Geiger and Scott were undoubtedly politically aware of, just because the exploitation of Africa was and is so ubiquitous. And now we're getting somewhere, maybe a step beyond coincidence, where there's context and pathos, and we're relying on both Geiger and Scott to be ignorant of this deity's existence, which, sure, maybe, but also I'd heard of it, I'm sure a lot of you had heard of it too, and we're not internationally renowned creatives, making one of the most important important horror icons of all time. I'd just never really seen these images or put the link together, but I'm pretty certain that Geiger may have, or Geiger and Scott perhaps, at least enough to be influenced by it. 
And if we do take this reading as true, something extremely interesting emerges, because while most of you probably don't agree with it, many critics see the Xenomorph as a monstrous and racist depiction of blackness, and this really changes the game in that respect. Because the subtext becomes one of this Yoruban trickster deity, seeking revenge on the almost entirely white colonial exploiters. And in the original Alien, Wayland yutani is really only known as the company. They are a stand-in for unthinking capitalism and colonial exploitation. That's why they send the Nostromo to LV-426, because they think there is something they can gain there, something that can be exploited for their benefit, just like we saw in Africa. And rather than finding riches, they find the unthinking revenge of this image of blackness. But rather than some racist representation, it's this primordial African being, Eshu, a being that impregnates and rapes and feminizes the crew in grotesque mimicry of what white exploiters did in Africa. And again, if any of what I said there doesn't make sense to you or sound super weird, just go check out my Alien Explained video, it's all covered in detail there. I would be very interested to hear what the critics that see Alien as a racist franchise think about this theory, because if it is true, it really bridges the gap or heals the divide perhaps between this powerful movie icon and how its representations of race are being read into. I'd also love to hear what you guys think about it, so let me know down in the comments. At first I was leaning towards coincidence, but the more I've thought about it, the more compelling I've found it to be. I don't like dismissing theories based on a presumption that the filmmakers didn't know something but I do. H.R. Geiger was an extremely talented creative. Ridley Scott is an extremely intelligent and talented individual also. So my way of looking at it really has to be, if I've seen the link then there's every chance they did too, and for me that provides a whole new awesome reading to a movie that I already considered perfect. That's it for this one guys, thanks so much for watching and special thanks to the people who decided to support me on Patreon. It's crazy to me, but I'm also very very grateful. See you next time, peace.